a KQED television production. It's like holy mother of comfort food. Throw it down, it's noodle crack. <laughs> you have to be ready for the heart attack on a platter. Okay, I'm the bacon guy, right? <laughs> Oh, it just did one. a jig every time I dipped into it. It just <laughs> completely blew really? my mind. I felt like I had a mouthful of raw vegetables and dry dough. Oh, yes. please, I want the dessert first. Yes. It, uh, <laughs> I told me you had to there's... wait. <laughs> Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... IRG has thousands of natural stone surfaces, all in stock today. IRG, online at marblecompany.com. Bay Area Subaru dealers. Opportunities to test drive the 2014 Subaru XV Crosstrek Hybrid are available at local Subaru dealers. Subaru online at Subaru.com. Located at the Southern Gateway to Napa, Jamison Ranch Vineyards offers handcrafted wines, chef's food pairings, and weekly live music. JamisonRanch.com. Oakland International Airport. Offering new flights to Europe, Hawaii, and all across the USA. Oakland International. Park close. Fly on time. With whole toasted sesame seeds, garlic, ginger, and other natural ingredients, soy ve sauces and marinades bring a taste of Asia to your favorite dishes. Support KQED's vehicle donation program and donate a car to help raise funds for quality public media. Powered by cars. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, Foundation Executive Maria Fort loves to travel and visit the international source of her favorite dishes. This keeps her on her culinary toes, and her collection of several thousand cookbooks keeps all of the recipes at her fingertips. Content pioneer Andrew Vance is a writer, freelance journalist, and visionary who spends his time strategizing and working out. His athleticism and commitment to fitness day in and day out fuels his enormous appetite and prowess as a cook. And San Francisco fireman Danny Gracia smolders with passion for his pick where hot from the oven pizza pies are combined with boutique whiskeys, throwback cocktails, and nostalgic decor. This retro Chicago-style eatery inspired by Al Capone is on Vallejo in San Francisco, and it's called Capos. Capos means the boss. You come into my restaurant, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's North Beach, you know, you got a little edge. Capos is off the beaten path, you know. I didn't want it to be on Columbus. I wanted it to be a neighborhood place, very family, old school Italian. I really wanted to have that nostalgia look. I mean, that goes from my car to the way I dress and even my tattoos. Pretty much everything you see in here is my idea. This is the Capone booth. It's original memorabilia from the 30s, the 20s, and even the 40s. When you think of Capos, it's everything in one. You have the whiskey program that's so awesome, so you think of that speakeasy, bootlegging kind of feel. We have nearly 100 whiskeys. My mixologist is Elmer Mexicanos, and the stuff that he does with our cocktails, it's like no other. We have four predominant styles when it comes to our pizza, cracker thin, deep dish, cast iron skillet and stuff. And I use Sarasota flour. I'm probably one of the only guys that have it in California. And then we have, of course, some of the Italian dinners. What's great is when you're in the kitchen, you see the bar, you see the restaurant, everyone's having a good time, and it's not pretentious. It's just a great San Francisco restaurant that's becoming an institution. Danny, you're a firefighter, and what is your favorite thing to cook? Because you guys cook in the firehouse. We cook. we cook every day that we work. We cook lunch and dinner. Uh -huh. uh, my favorite thing to cook is probably salads for lunch and uh, chicken dishes for dinner. I mean, I was thinking maybe you'd say something Italian, you know, when you go out, and that's how you've discovered Capos. Well, Tony's Pizza, also in North Beach, I've had and their food. And that's the owner of Capos. That's the owner of Capos, correct. Place. Even though Tony is not from Chicago, he's worked in Chicago, he's a pizza pioneer. <laughs> yes, this, this restaurant does have the pizza oven, but it's about sit-down Italian-American classic dishes, right. uh, pastas, chicken dishes. We started with the artichoke, heart, cream, spinach, provolone, crostini, appetizer, which was spectacular. He uses the heart of the artichoke, leaves a little bit of the tail on there. It's creamy, it's rich. It, it was just excellent. 
Caesar salad as well. Big, leafy, full hearts of romaine with a nice creamy Caesar with the white anchovies. Excellent. Enough for two people to split. All right, and did you start with salad or did you just go straight for the pizza, Andrew? Well, I put in my order for a deep dish pizza right away because I knew that that was something that I wanted to try. And it takes time, Yeah, right? they say give 45 minutes to get yeah. the deep dish pizza. Ours came a little bit faster, it was well worth the wait. We also got a pasta dish, uh, masta choli with homemade Italian sausage. We say make yeah. all their they sausages make their sausage. Yeah, they, they make their, their own right. sausage. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah nice. everybody at the table, I yeah. mean, we could taste the difference. It was delicious. And then we also got a cracker crust pizza margarita, which was also delicious and I, I love pizza I love Tony's pizza I was really excited to check this restaurant out and it really hit the spot for me it hit the spot now did you enjoy the pizza sort of oh sort of we had uh, the Frank Nitti pizza in, mm -hmm. a, in a very thin crust it had little bits of spinach with a dollop of ricotta cheese we, there were four of us and we really split on the restaurant two of us loved it and or rather felt that there's so much here that you really can't experience this with one visit. But the most interesting part of this restaurant was that it was a throwback to the 1920s when prohibition reigned right. and they were paying tribute to some of the most notorious Gangsta. gangsters, Topos, gangsters and memorabilia of these people scattered and various And you would places. think that the restaurant has been there for a long time, but it hasn't. No, he just really year. captured yeah, the it's field. Within, it's right. within the last year. One year. He knows what he's doing, the attention right. to detail, the right. booths, the restored uh, meat slicer in the front window with right. prosciutto on there, hand crank. I mean, and the, bar, and the bar is beautiful. It's the, different, the, yeah. the yeah. different whiskeys. Yeah. I'd, I'd say get a booth if you can. I think yeah. that's probably the best way to the experience booth, the restaurant. Nice. Yeah. yeah, come with the group. That's something that I would definitely recommend uh, with this restaurant is the food is delicious and it's abundant. And if you really want to get a taste of a, a lot of different menu items, like if you want to get a taste of more than just one or two pizzas. Right. Well, let's talk yeah. about deep dish pizza because, it's... Andrew, you actually took yours home and weighed it, right? Yeah, I don't <laughs> normally uh, weigh my pizza, but uh, I ended up having quite a bit of leftover. You weigh your other food? I don't. I, I never weigh any of my food, but I have quite a bit of leftover food. I took my pizza home and I had a quarter of a pizza left and it weighed so much, I was just curious how much it weighed. And it was 1.6 pounds for a quarter wow. of the pizza, which puts you at about 6.4 pounds <laughs> in total for the pizza. For the pizza. That's pizza. a lot of food. That's you better have and, and tell me about the pizza that you had because, I mean, he's won the world uh, pizza competition. You right. know, he, it's about the butter and the flour from yeah, it's, Chicago. Yeah, it's, it's, it's delicious. Well, the Chicago style pizza is a cornmeal crust, a mozzarella base, then like pretty thick layer of tomato sauce. And it was the Chicago pie, which had both meatball, meatball that's and what homemade I had, Italian yeah, sauce. Spectacular. Yeah. Delicious. You know, I had three other fireman my son who's 16 my wife we ate and drank you know and were full and brought food home to have another meal the next day right really. right the pasta dishes we had a dish with uh, crab and shrimp mm -hmm. oh, it was wow. excellent we had chicken vesuvio which was absolutely excellent the chicken it, it was two hind quarters it was uh, very soft but the skin was crisp and it was cooked with wine and lemon juice, and it was served with sweet peas. And the juxtaposition between the sweet peas and the lemon juice was just outstanding. And they have a lovely wine list to go along yes, with them, very well-priced wine. Bar wine. But uh, we have yeah. to talk whiskey. Come on, a hundred whiskeys they have there. Didn't have time. You guys, it should be but, always time for liquor. Always time yeah. for, that's right, always time for whiskey. That, Come on, once you drink brown, you go down. Yeah. Were you too full or could you squeeze some dessert in? No, we squeezed some in. We had some bread pudding, which was very nice with caramel sauce. It was firm and not too sweet and it was served with vanilla bean gelato and it was wonderful. Yeah, they would have had to excavate part of my stomach to get <laughs> dessert, but bread pudding sounds delicious. So. The more people you bring, the more access to all the dishes you'll have. You're right. Right. You can bring a bigger table, group. But know? they don't take reservations unless you're a group of six or more, right? But I will say no. one thing that's nice, because we ran into about an hour wait, I think, when we popped yeah. in, which is not that big of a deal. They uh, just texted us when our table was ready, so there are plenty of options to go grab a drink yeah, you in can, North you Beach. Can roam around. All right, this is your spot. Danny, wrap it up for us. Uh, Capo's, classic Italian-American in the heart of North Beach. Great value for your dollar. Food menu's great. Beverage menu's great. I can't wait to get back. All right. And Andrew? It's classic Italian family-style dining. If you love pizza, you owe it to yourself to check this spot out. All right. And Maria? An enormous menu, and it really takes much more than one visit to do it justice. 
beautiful. If you would like to try Capos, it's on Vallejo at Columbus in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-986-8998. It's open every night for dinner. Reservations are accepted for parties of six or more. And the average tab for dinner without drinks is around $30. Francophiles have dubbed Maria's Pick a little piece of Paris, where French food for the soul is served up with American aplomb. It's in the heart of Berkeley, and it's called Bistro Liaison. The thing I like about having a restaurant is taking care of people, and I think a lot of times people forget that we're in the hospitality business, and that's the whole reason for cooking. Hi, I'm Todd Nice, chef owner of Bistro Liaison in the People's Republic of Berkeley. I arrived in California in 1994 and went to work for Left Bank. One of my mentors was Roland Passo, and I worked for him for the better part of seven years. In 2001, myself along with my wife Natalie decided to open up Bistro Liaison. The bistro should be a warm and welcoming place. It's not meant to be pretentious or stuffy, whether it be for a glass of wine and a cheese plate or to celebrate a 50th wedding anniversary. I've worked in San Francisco, I've worked in the North Bay and the South Bay, and the people of Berkeley are by far the best foodies in the Bay Area. What we call the green hour is our late night happy hour. It's all things absent, and uh, if you're not careful, you'll leave here a little absent-minded. Bistro Liaison is an authentic French bistro. We cook within the seasons. We visit our farmer's markets. We support our small businesses. Uh, some of the dishes that we do have been around for hundreds of years, and we are the only ones doing them these days. Now, Maria, before we get into your restaurant, you have been a supporter of KQED for how many years? Since the early 60s. Since the early 60s. My God, none of us were born at this table. <coughs> well, so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so good for you. We're, we're thrilled to have you on the show. And how did you discover your restaurant? Well, we were going to have a uh, New Year's Eve dinner, and we decided this was brand new then. It's uh, like 12 years old now. It was love at first sight and first bite. This time we had tart flambe, which was onion, yeah. a little bacon, a little cheese, and the bacon was uh, smoked, and it was just wonderful, and it lent itself to sharing very easily. Mm -hmm. My main dish was bouillabaisse, and that's a whole production. Rock cod, scallops, oysters and clams, and they were all cooked to perfection. They were in a sauce which was fish-based, and it had uh, saffron and fennel, and it was just magnificent. I love seafood, and I love the bouillabaisse. It was delicious, and it had an abundant yeah, amount of seafood. It had a really focused, intense flavor. So I found it to be quite delightful. I went for land animals myself. <laughs> They're delicious. I brought my mother-in-law as a date, not because I thought this was the Maury show. I just <laughs> felt that since she's been all over the world and been to French restaurants and I hadn't, right. I didn't want to be intimidated by not reading, speaking French. But walking into this place, people were super nice, easy to get to. I had the, the beef bourguignon, two substantial pieces of beef on there, tender, flaky, with the pearl onions, spectacular. It's is there, just a, is there a wine day. that goes with that? There, is, there are so it's, many okay. wines that Might? go with beef bourguignon, Fred? but Pinot Noir yeah. is the traditional okay. from okay. Burgundy. Tremendous. My mother-in-law, the pork normand, pork I think normand. is how you say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of a sweet, savory sauce. They were sliced, about four cutlets, tender, it was tasty. And what'd you drink with that? Well, I started I with wine. Lot of, which, there's a lot of uh, nice wines I, I started with wine because I didn't know they had a, a full bar, and then I was pleasantly surprised when I reached over and saw the full bar menu and I had a liaison martini. And you know what they do? They stamp the drinks and stamp the dessert. It's super right. cool yeah. on right. the table. On, on, yeah. on the yeah. white paper, butcher paper yeah. over the, the white tablecloth. I was really hoping cool. they'd give me markers to do some illustrations, <laughs> but I also here. had the steak with frites, which was delicious, mm -hmm. medium rare. It was perfectly cooked. It had a really rich butter sauce with green peppercorns on it. Really nice sear on the outside of the steak and delicious <laughs> shoestring french fries uh, that perfectly complemented the, the flavor of the steak and the jus. Also on the appetizer front, we had the uh, French onion soup. I, I really enjoyed eating it. Had a nice thick layer of cheese. Again, the, the broth was very intense, focused flavor. 
Then we also had the mussels, which had some interesting touches that I hadn't seen with mussels before. They had like a sauteed spinach on top of the mussels. And then the broth itself was a, a white wine with butter, garlic, shallots, and then it had tarragon in it. So it had an, an the interesting food looked really good. I, I saw it coming out, you know, we yeah, got it was there early, all the food looked good, the presentation. And like Danny said, uh, there was, it was a very unintimidating dining experience, really friendly wait One staff. page menu, yeah. right. simple, right. English. Uh, there were a lot of people there who were headed to the Berkeley Rep. So mm -hmm. when we sat down, they asked us if we were headed to the theater. We said we weren't. We were just there to dine. Mm -hmm. uh, they were doing a good job of getting people in and out who were on their way to the theater. Mm -hmm. And able to park. I parked right in front. The meters are only enforced till 6 p.m., which we're not accustomed to here in town. <laughs> that was a nice feature right there. You know, get out, walk 50 feet, you're in a nice restaurant. So know? did you feel that you liked your French food experience? Yes. Are you going to I mean, I've been up? wanting to go to France anyway, but uh, now I really want to go. This was just a little virtual yeah, exploration exactly, for you. Yeah, exactly. And what? there were actually real French people in the restaurant. I heard them. Well, I think it was French they were speaking behind me. <laughs> Leslie, sure. can I speak about some desserts? Absolutely, you can speak about desserts. We had Il Flottante, which is Floating oh. Island, and it was, it was a cupcake-shaped meringue with a lace cookie top hat floating in a creme anglaise with mm -hmm. almond. It was that, that absolutely out of this It was world. incredible. It was like a floating snowball cupcake yeah. with in a lagoon, custard In sauce. a lagoon of... Eating flower clouds or something. It was I, I think I see some sweat on yeah. that one. You were just like, <laughs> that was oh. delicious. I also dove into the dessert scene. Uh, we got the flourless chocolate cake, which had, I believe, a raspberry sauce mm -hmm. and vanilla bean ice cream. True to its billing, it was molten in the center. So good variety of textures. Fairly standard dish, but it was excellent. And did you feel that you got bang for your buck at this place? You get what you pay for. It's what we're paying for. I thought definitely. I mean, there was more than enough food. What I had in mind, French cuisine, I, I have my own probably distorted view now after going to a place like this. Do you want to give her a kiss, Danny, for that? Do you want to, you know? Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You've introduced him to French food, That's right. see? Right. Next time I have see? to go with you now, Maria. All right, Maria, it's your restaurant. Give us a quick summary. It's a real French bistro and with uh, seasonal and regional foods cook to the perfection. All right, and Andrew? I don't go to French restaurants frequently, but I'm very glad I went to this one. It was delicious. All right, and Danny? Uh, my first time at a French restaurant, enjoyed it. Service was excellent, food was great. I'll be back for sure. This time I'll bring my wife instead of my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Maria if, as well. <laughs> if you would like to try Bistro Liaison, it's on Shattuck at Hearst in Berkeley. The telephone number is 510-849-2155. It's open every day for lunch and dinner with brunch on the weekends. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab for dinner with Without drinks is around $35. What place in the wine world offers a tapestry of Roman history, breathtaking mountainous landscapes, and compelling modern architecture? Rioja, Spain's traditional yet innovative staple. As the first of Spain's designated quality wine regions in 1926 and still ranked at the top, it's home to famous reds classically aged in oak to gain elegance over time. Though Garnacha, Graciano, and Mazuelo are included, Tempranillo is the dominant grape variety. Here's a trick. Turn around the bottle to get an idea of each wine's style. Cosecha is young and fresh with little to no aging. Crianza, with a couple of years aging, is layered but still fruity. Reserva has minimum three years from barrel to bottle, making it smooth and spicy. Finally, Gran Reserva, made in great vintages and aged at least five years, is earthy elegance. These wines offer some of the best quality to price ratio you'll find anywhere. I love them. Cheers. Cebicharias abound in Peru as places to share life, sea, nature, culture, and friendship. And at Andrew's spot, all of these elements come together in a San Francisco location that wows. On Pier 1 and a half, it's called La Mar. We go through a ton of lime here. We freshly squeeze everything, both at the bar and in the kitchen, to make the leche de tigres for the ceviches, as well as all the drinks that we make at the bar, including obviously the thousands of biscuits hours that we make every week. My name is Gabriel Originario. I'm the general manager of uh, La Mar Cevicheria in San Francisco. La Mar originally started in uh, Lima about 10 years ago. Once you experience you know, Peruvian food, you really discover like a new culinary experience you never had before. My name is Danny Cole, and I'm the executive chef at La Mar Cevicheria. 
I born and raised in Peru. It's a tradition of my family, they're all cooks. Peruvian food has a lot of influence. Chinese influence, Japanese, Spain, Italy. That makes Peruvian food very rich and a good blend of everything. <laughs> Every morning at six o'clock in the morning, we got our fresh fish from the Pier 35, which is a few blocks from here. And we have our own batchers. We work together with the Monterey Bay Aquarium and we follow the month to month guidelines uh, that we receive from them. I love working here because of uh, the festive uh, environment, uh, obviously the food. When I went to Lima, Peru, I was so pleased to see that the food that we make here in San Francisco is just as good as Alamari Lima. Andrew, let's talk ceviche. I don't go out and do a lot of fine dining, but after I had a friend take me to Lamar, I've been back many times since because the ceviche was so fresh and delicious and the flavors were outstanding. I always like to kick off my dining experience at Lamar with uh, the ceviche mix though. You get to try four different ceviches. Everything from like a Mexican inspired ceviche, which has an avocado in it and some jalapeno, to a Japanese inspired ceviche, which has more Japanese sushi type flavors. But all of the ceviches to me are delicious. It's one of my favorite things to eat. If it were served in buckets, I would probably order a bucket. <laughs> you strike me as a leche de tigre sort of guy. Yeah, I am a uh, fan of the milk of the tiger, uh -huh. uh, Leslie. So leche de tigre is the base that they use to uh, marinate the, the fish uh, to and cook the ceviche. The fish, essentially yeah, it's raw it, fish, yeah, ceviche, cooked cook in those citrus fish. juices. Yeah, yeah, the citrus juice cooks the fish. The way they are marinated is just out of this world. It really tickles your taste buds. <laughs> We had ceviche nico. It was wonderful. It was ahi tuna with Japanese cucumbers and daikon and uh, a fine sauce. There was a little sweetness to it, which was mm -hmm. really great. It has almost like a little bit of a tangerine taste yes. to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had an interesting dining experience there. Um, walking in, great place, Pier 1 and a half. Huge. Tremendous setting, terrazzo floors, high ceilings, view of the bay. We start out with the plantain chips they bring to yeah, the table they, yeah. with two sauces. Sweet one's potato. orange, one's yellow. Yeah, sweet I like the orange one better. <laughs> It was a little bit spicy. That was cool. Uh, we had a crab potato dish that was nice. Cold Yukon gold pressed potatoes uh -huh. with Dungeness crab on top. Just rich enough, just light enough right. to get it started along with the plantain. The waitress explained the menu. I was still a little bit confused, so I figured I'll just roll the dice. I kind of like this, I kind of like that. Ordered a, a crispy noodle dish that's a vegan base, and then we added seafood to it with quinoa. That thing was not happening. You didn't smelled like when like my You're wife burns guy. the microwave popcorn. <laughs> Let's face the facts, Danny. When you roll into a restaurant, you try to combine the vegan with the seafood. That's like trying to bring the crane and tiger salads and kung fu together. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. I don't you know. You like if that's the milk of the tiger. Out. I like the eye of the tiger. <laughs> fair enough. See, guys, fair let's enough. call it a day, exactly. right? Fair you know, enough. Fair, fair enough. enough. Call it a stand up. All right, on that one. Next time, I got to bring. Andrew has to bring me. You have to go with Andrew. <laughs> the he tiger. Owes, that's right. Andrew he owes somebody. I'll bring the crane. Okay. <laughs> all right. And I have to say, now, Lamar has outposts all over all over the world, really. Yeah. The owner started this in Peru, really but in, in Chile South, and South Brazil. And I have to say, I had the best pisco sour of my life in the Santiago Lamar. So you have bar to... The bar is incredible. I mean, it, walking in, it, the bar... In this bar, I, yeah. I, I'm going back to post up at the bar. Right. For sure. I mean, I'll throw that I mean, out the, there. The bar is incredible. Yeah, they have a beautiful, beautiful bar. Beautiful people, hipsters, yeah. music. Maria, yeah. what else did you have? beside the ceviche and well we had a salad the way the little pieces of vegetables were hidden in the greenery was just wonderful and then we also had the pescado which is a yellowtail tuna on skewers served over beans and uh, peruvian corn and that was quite fascinating and very tasty the paella dish i think it's called a rose lamar Mm -hmm. And it was amazing, and it, it was had so much seafood, and it was so flavorful. I loved it. They have a lomo sotato, which is kind of a stir-fried ribeye, big chunks of ribeye, seared to perfection, medium rare on the inside, so yielded to the knife nicely, and perfectly complemented by the jus and hunks of fried potato. The piece de resistance was the dessert. Meza morita. It had a base made of oats, quinoa and uh, almond paste. 
And on that were uh, fruits. It's almost hard to describe. I want it I now. Oh, you're making me wish I, I tried it, it Maria. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't even see that one on the menu. It, it was absolutely magnificent. I wanted to be sure to present it because it was so Everybody special. Everybody should order that. I believe this dish was like quattro leche gelato or something like that. It was mm -hmm. a four milk ice cream, <laughs> ice cream and it had a rice foam on top of it. And who doesn't love a good rice foam? <laughs> and it was more icy than it was creamy. And it tasted a lot like uh, an ice cream version of horchata. Mm -hmm. It was a really nice, light way to top off a delicious meal for me. I describe them as uh, pumpkin onion rings. <laughs> they look like onion rings, three or four of them on a plate with a honey brown sugar sauce, dusted with some powdered sugar. They were super tasty. I love it. And what about service? Uh, I thought the service was very good. The people were friendly. That mm -hmm. wasn't really an issue at all. Uh, maybe a little bit more uh, time having the server explain the menu to someone who's there for the first time. At the place called Lamar, uh, the sea, I think maybe stick to the seafood. Well, that's what I was just gonna say. It's your restaurant, so give us a quick summary. I love it. Go-to place for ceviche in San Francisco. Awesome service, great ambiance. Okay, Maria. It's uh, authentic Peruvian dishes, especially with ceviches. All right, and Danny. Beautiful location, beautiful bar, great desserts. I'm gonna give it another try. Excellent. If you would like to try Lamar, it's on Pier 1 and a half on the Embarcadero in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-397-8880. It's open for lunch and dinner every day with brunch on the weekends. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab for dinner without drinks is around $40. I have to thank my immensely entertaining guests on this week's show, Danny Gracia, who introduced us to Capos, where Al Capone and 30 style dining meets modern day San Francisco. Maria Fort and her very French neighborhood friendly dining destination of Bistro Liaison in the heart of Berkeley. And Andrew Vance and Lamar for South American flavors and sweeping views of the bay. We really want to hear from you and your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about. So go to our website at kqed.org slash check, please, where you'll find a lot more information and details on all the restaurants featured. You can watch a segment, download a show, and read my notes on the wines we're drinking and enjoying today. And you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter for exclusive behind-the-scenes clips, pics, and personal notes from me. We love hearing from you guys. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers. And cheers to you guys. This show is available on demand and online. To watch an episode, find restaurant information, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash check please. You'll also find us on Facebook and Twitter. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by... IRG has thousands of natural stone surfaces, all in stock today. IRG, online at marblecompany.com. Bay Area Subaru dealers. Opportunities to test drive the 2014 Subaru XV Crosstrek Hybrid are available at local Subaru dealers. Subaru, online at Subaru.com. Just 45 minutes from the Bay Bridge, Jameson Ranch Vineyards offers handcrafted wines, chef's food pairings, and weekly live music. JamesonRanch.com. Oakland International Airport, offering new flights to Europe, Hawaii, and all across the USA. Oakland International, park close, fly on time. With whole toasted sesame seeds, garlic, ginger, and other natural ingredients, soy ve sauces and marinades bring a taste of Asia to your favorite dishes. Support KQED's vehicle donation program and donate a car to help raise funds for quality public media. Powered by cars. KQED television production.